So, after I cut this bed, I realized that I forgot to do measurements. So, I'm going to shoot this. The bed's been cut, but I wanted to explain what I did for measurements and how I came up with my marks before we get too far into cutting this thing and it's too late. I want, you, I want to show what I did so that we can record it easily and have some sort of documentation for exactly what I cut, how much I cut, and why I cut where I did. So from the front edge of the, the truck bed here, this is where the, the front of the truck would go, the cab would sit, the cab would sit here and go forward. The, uh, so it's all kind of sitting here. So this is the front edge. So from the top where this this indented part is, I just put a measuring tape over the the front here, I came back nine and five sixteenths inches from the front. That just happened to work out with it being fairly straight, so I just came back this far. And then where it curves around here, I came back ten and a half inches. So everywhere else down the side of this bed. It's ten and a half inches from the front, so I just hung the tape over the front, went ten and a half inches, and followed it all, made a mark all the way down based on this line. So both my lines are based on the, um, the front edge here. So if this front edge isn't straight, uh, I might be in trouble. So then what I did is I added sixteen inches to this, so that makes it twenty-six and a half, and I went back to the back. Again, both my lines are referenced off the, the front edge of the bed. Came back to the back, 26 and a half inches. And same thing, I tried to make a, as many marks as I could based on, this, based on this front reference edge here. That way, if something's a little off, hopefully it's off evenly so as we cut. If the cut kind of makes a, a shift like this, it'll hopefully have the same curvature on the front as it does the back when those two pieces come together without this section in the center, they'll line up nicely and minimize the amount of grinding that we have to do. Um, so that's what I did. I'll show you guys in a second a tool that I came up with. Tool, just a way to try to keep these gaps marked evenly. It gets kind of tricky with the way the bed folds and turns and the body lines. It's difficult to keep 16 inches. So as I do some tape on here, I came back and measured all the places I could to try to get the tape lined out at exactly a 16 inch gap. And then once I got there, I took a marker and marked it. And my whole goal is to try to make these lines as symmetrical and perfect as possible. Um, so the reason I came back uh, 10 and a half inches off the front is because there's a unused brace here that runs right through the center of this. So this truck also had some body damage on it. So taking out the 16 inches here at the rumpled up part of the bed and with this extra auxiliary gas tank fill hole was punched through here, it removes that as well. So we will lose one brace that runs through here, but that brace was not used to bolt the bed to the frame. That was just a extra brace for the floor so the floor would hold some more weight. Now that's coming out. This truck's not going to see big loads in the bed anymore. Worst case, it sees a couple bags of mulch or something going to Home Depot in the future. Um, so, if you guys are trying to do this at home, that makes your, your cutting pretty simplistic there. 9 5 16 on top. 10 and a half inch from the front edge all the way down. And just try to keep those lines straight. And then again, I base this back line off of the front edge of the bed of the truck just to have the same reference point and then took a fixed edge so if you had some sort of tool that would hold 16 inches in a scribe or anything you could mark down it the, whole, the next problem is when you try to mark down the truck trying to hold your tool steady so the tool's not walking back and forth and that was kind of a challenge that's where the tape's nice so you can kind of tape it off 
Uh, so the best thing I find to find out is trying to find a reference point on the front. Yeah, you could really take one off the back or some other body line or something that you wanted to. I chose to use a front edge. Um, I mark my line that way, then I mark 16 inches back. If that works out for me, great. If it doesn't, uh, it'll be lesson learned and this will be a video about what not to do. I got this uh, patent pending uh, bed marking tool here, so you know you guys don't try to steal my design ideas or anything. Just set two sharpies up, 16 inches apart, according to the measuring tape, like almost exactly. This was trying to figure out some way to check the distance and mark this thing. I'm sure I'm like right at 16 all the way down. I think on the bottom on this side where I have this body damage here, I might actually cut each one of these in a little bit so that we're not worried about trying to straighten out this body damage and give me some extra material here so that we can kind of try to straighten this and, and grind it and straighten it and grind it and um, hopefully kind of sneak up on getting that bed joint to, as you grind more material out of the bottom get that bed joint to lay, lay flat as we kind of work these dents out of here and uh, pull this metal back together with all this rumpled up metal in between. I'm sure some of this is kind of stretched out. And it's much easier to cut more metal off than it is to put it back on. Uh, but it looks like our measurement is actually pretty close according to this tool here. It's a pretty straight line there. And again here I think it's going to be easier to cut the inside because you can always take more material off with a flat disc or something versus trying to put the try to go through and fill a big giant gap in the bed and the joint there in the future. So I'll do the same thing on the opposite side and I'll take a sawzall and start chopping on this thing. So I'm also gonna cut the front cap off this bed first to make a so I'll focus on making as straight of a line as possible here and then that'll allow this piece to sit on the floor and then I'll come back and cut this we'll call it the scrap section off of there and that way I'm not trying to fight if I were to cut it here first I think I'd be on the floor trying to fight this thing and try to cut this in a straight line with it moving around and stuff so I think it'll be easier to lock the cap off set it on the ground and then take this scrap section off of here the part we're going to discard and then we'll take the cap and put it back on this is kind of nerve-wracking cutting into a bed My blade on this saw isn't real straight. The blade kind of is bent slightly to the left there. So I think what I'm going to do is the blade's cutting nicely, but as it goes to the second box section of the the bed here, where it's an extra three or so inches wide, it's starting to make the cut go off to this direction. So I think I'll just put a nice straight blade on there, and so I can straighten that cut out. Hmm.
this metal it's super thin and like flimsy down here it just wants to move back and forth with that saw so i'm going to try a body saw see it gives you a little more control and keeps that metal from flopping so much So far things have gone pretty easy, minus a complication of my saw blades there. But you can see where the cut's been made on the outside, the front edge, and it came all the way down. And this is where the blade was just too short. The stroke on the saw was going back so far. It was pulling the blade behind this structural piece here, and so it just kept jamming the end of it and folding it up. So what I gotta do now is try to figure out how to measure I think a flat spot on this wall, so I might measure from it's like around the inside of this corner. There's a flat spot we can measure to there. Let's see if I can hold the tape here. So for example, looking down in the bed, if we measure from here to this flat surface back here, just this general wall. So we're not on, the, we're not on this bump sticking out here. Brings my edge to like nine and oh, what is that? Nine, uh, three sixteenths. And then the front section that's kind of that's not really accurate. Yeah, so again, try to mark this at nine and three sixteenths. Then make a, a line just all the way down this way. And I'll check the other side, and if it squares up, then I'll take that mark and try to snap like a chalk line or something all the way across the bed here. So it's got to, I'm gonna have to, I have to cut this floor from you know, the line we just looked at here. We just measured from where that line went there. And we got to measure all the way, we got to cut all the way across the floor at that same distance up over to the line on that side. If we can focus it over there. So that line over there, and then same thing, we'll come back 16 inches when we cut the other side of the bed, and again we have to lop the whole bed off all the way across here. And making our lines as smooth as possible, so when this piece of excess section comes out of here, that both these joints will hopefully line up as straight as possible. Pretty crazy, about 9 and 3 sixteenths over here also. It's like a pretty easy to follow line there. All right, check out this. I uh, just hung the front end off a ratchet strap here so it doesn't fall off and hit the ground when I cut the floor loose. So now I'm gonna try to, as carefully as possible, cut this floor across here. It seems like it's gonna be kind of challenging to keep things going in a straight line, but. You guys can laugh and follow along as I get into trouble here.
Front's off. It's flying. All right. Uh, I guess repeat that process again, because we're just gonna cut here, cut there, and cut back across. Except this time, I guess I could probably put our strap underneath and hold it. All right, so here's the inside of the bed. The camera's inside looking at the line that I'm working on cutting right now. So what I'm doing is, you can see the, here's the floor and I'm gonna mark this thing exactly 16 inches from the line we just cut. So I took the, here's the fresh line we just cut and then I came in exactly 16 inches in a couple spots and I marked it. He said here's 16. And I'm going to say here's a small mark. And the same thing down here. Come in exactly 16. Put a mark. And then for a straight reference line. I'm going to set this square against the corner of the bed. The bed floor is good and square here. And I'm going to mark a line there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll mark a line. Give me a place to cut. And somehow I've got to come across here at this 16 inch mark and pull that. Uh, that blue chalk line back across the bed again. cut out of there. 16 inches gone. Everything looks pretty straight. The uh, the saw was kind of fighting me there at the end, but not sure what's going on. I'll have to make a hardware store run before I cut the next one. I'll get a couple more blades here, but uh, hopefully it's easier to cut next time around. All right, moment of truth. I'll pick this, uh, this front bed cap up off the floor here and Hang this guy back on.
Well, here's the first stage of becoming a short bed. Um, looks like the gap worked out pretty good. First uh, initial cut, this is no grinding, no anything. Uh, looks like the top of it here has got a little bit of a uh, misangled cut where the saws all blade started on the inside. So I think if I just kind of flap this that down, that, that joint will pull up really quickly. Uh, the rest of this actually looks surprisingly good. It pulled up, uh, pulled up pretty well. So a little bit of work on the bottom here, because again, the uh, I went safe on the bottom and left some extra material so that uh, I can kind of just sneak up on this gap down here with the flap disc. I'll just kind of grind a little bit back. On. But everything looks like it should come together pretty well. That bed floor's got a little bit bigger of a gap in it than I want to see. Uh, especially on this end and then some of that tank that auxiliary uh, tank hole didn't go away either I thought I was gonna get rid of all that and maybe I should have measured a little bit better but I have to figure out something to do to kind of figure out how to patch that hole in the floor maybe it doesn't really matter I guess but anyway hopefully as I get that uh, that bottom lip bodywork area straightened out down there you can see it's touching real bad it's holding the whole thing apart and hopefully hopefully as i get that brought together it'll close that gap up in the bed floor here and, um, it looks like if anything there's more material to take off the bed floor so you can see where the like the see where the blue line still is on the on the metal here like this needs to be ground off with a flap disc and same here it's got excess metal left on it All right, so I guess my camera kind of just shut itself off there. Decided we didn't need to see the last part of the bed cap going back on here. Uh, so what I did is I got everything to fit and uh, kind of got my gap aligned here. And I went ahead and took the roll lock disc and stripped the paint back. I put some masking tape down here and protected the paint so we have a kind of a nice, uh, nice looking scar line when it's done. But I just stripped that paint and crap off of there so that we're down to bare metal so I can go ahead and start welding this thing up. Uh, I got the gap pretty much where I want it, just as you guys saw with the uh, previous video. We uh, just tested it, put it on, took it off, touched it up a little bit, put it on, took it off, over and over until I got the gap where I wanted, where I thought I could weld it. And you can see it actually looks pretty good now. Uh, it's nice and straight, nice and square. Got a nice tight gap all the way across here. Just kind of had to take my time and just take the flap disc to it a lot of time and kind of just sneak up on it. So I get it ready to go and put it back together here one last time and try to make sure that gaps as nice and consistent looking as possible so that uh, when you go to weld it, it's super easy to weld.
need to lop off the back of this thing. So I'm going to use a standard, I'm going to use this body line here as a straight edge and hope that it's straight. So I'm going to come forward off this body line 12 and a half inches. Uh, I think that'll put us between the rear body brace. There's nothing we're going to hit as it cuts off and sections it. Um, it's forward of the rear bolt holes that bolt the bed down to the frame. So it shouldn't interrupt those at all. So here's the measurements that I used. From the backs, there's we're gonna put a line here at 12 and a half and draw a nice straight line on the truck and then come over four inches from that, which will give us our total four inch of a section there which will be 16 and a half. So again, I'm going to come off of this line here and mark that as 16 and a half. So at least if it's wrong, it's consistently wrong. Um, so I'm going to again try to take a couple of pins and set them at four inches apart and remark this line on each side, trying to be as straight as possible. And then I'll break out the engine hoist and sawzall again and lop this thing off. Oh. Alright, back with the patent pending uh, Milwaukee marking tool. Set it four inches this time. Same thing here, I'm going to try to find a space to, or some sort of point of reference to measure from, and mark a line down. This one looks like it's got a lot of flat area back here. Looks like that seam actually, this back part of this rear bed stake actually lines up with that body seam that we were using as the front measurement point. Yeah, like it's on the money. So right at 12 and a half here, and I'm right at 12 and a half here, where that line's coming out. I'm going to just carry that through and put a couple marks here at 12 and a half. And get out the square and mark those off. So it looks like we don't have enough bed area back here to make this work out. To use a big square. So we'll just make do. I'll do the same thing on the other side and then pull a chalk line across.
Ooh. Well, back's off. Uh, I cut pretty easily. Didn't run into too many snags there. Uh, so now I'm going to try to figure out how to go kind of check our measurement again and make sure we're right, right at four inches here. And double check, double check. And then again, take the saw and lop this off here. And lop the additional four inches off. And start doing the fitting and finishing with the flat disc to put this rear cap back on this section here. back four inches out. So here it is after the original saws all cut and then I just uh, put the rear cap back on everything looks like it lined up pretty good looks like the floor is causing most of the interference issues at this time but lines and gaps look pretty straight this one looks worse just because it's uh, not bowed out and the, the floor inside there inside this crack is really pushing this gap apart at the bottom so I think as I finish the floor and get it to kind of come back together the floor has got a little excess material through here it's causing the uh, the lower section of the, the rear cap to push out like towards the rear bumper um, so I need to go through and do a little bit of flap disc work through here kind of get rid of some of these excess spots and trim this down and any place that the floor is kind of touching here and try to work the rest of this gap and straighten this up a little bit with the flap disc um, but I just put two clamps on it, a clamp on each bed rail, and then I put a, just a holder in the middle here just to hold it in place so you kind of see what it looks like. We'll move around the other side here. And again, these are just raw sawzall marks where the saw came through. Like this gap here, you could almost weld up. It's close enough. I'll, I'll do a little bit of fit and finish on this work here. Um, so this side had a, a dent in it also, and I took this dent and pushed it out from behind with just a uh, air hammer and a, a dolly just to move it, move the metal ahead of time. The one I did in the front, I tried to cut the dent out and then trying to bring two dented sections of metal together just didn't work out at all. So if you guys have any body work or any dents in a bed you're trying to do, I would strongly recommend pushing the dent out first and then cutting the bed. It, the amount of time it took to go back and fight those dents and stuff later took just a hellacious amount of time. But, all right, well, uh, I'll take a flap disc to the bed floor here and take it apart, put it back on, take it apart, put it back on a few times. And I'll just kind of leave the camera rolling. We'll fast forward through this.
All right, just to kind of give you guys some detail on what I'm doing here. As I cut this bed floor closer and closer together in a straight line, so there's any place that the floor is touching, like here, you can see the the light on the floor, and then the floor touches here, and then there's some more light. Looks like I'm going to kind of bump this bed over to align the seam a little bit. But it, uh, the more that I file out of these little gaps like this and straighten out these lines and allow, allow the bed floor to actually come together, it has a huge impact on the sides and on both the inside and the outside. So there's a gap on the, a gap on the outside here as we come down towards the bottom. And this gap gets wider and wider. Well, the metal on the outside is not actually touching, but if you look Inside, I doubt I can catch this on the camera at just the right exact angle. But if you look at the floor in there, you can see that the floor is actually touching itself and it's preventing these two outside panels from coming together. So, just that little alignment I did just now on the floor in there, it brought this lower gap a lot closer together. So, I think just a little more fitting and finishing on that floor will bring this gap almost into perfect alignment where the finish grinding on it's going to be pretty minimal but I'll show you the other side um, the other side's looking like it's almost weldable as is it uh, the gap on it's looking really nice I really know no issues here all the way down it's pulling up really well and all I've done is fit and finish the floor so anyway I'll kind of keep fitting this floor and all I do is go through the marker here I just anywhere I see that the floor is touching I take a marker and I mark it. Focus on that. So I just mark these spots and come back with a flat disc and I um, grind down one side of the bed and the floor the other just to get this gap more and more uniform as it goes across. And each time I do that the thing just fits better and better. So I would say if you're doing this start with the floor gap. It's like the biggest most intimidating gap and it's the hardest to work with but it seems to make the biggest difference for the, the way the whole thing fits back together. Maybe you're better at running a saw than I am, or you've got a different saw that cuts a straighter line, so you won't have this sort of a problem with your floor, but this is what I'm fighting here today. So here we are, still sneaking up on this thing, and the uh, the floor is actually starting to overlap in some places now. I'm gonna take the high spots out of it and get things to come together. There's a uh, there's no clamp holding the floor level here, so it, it's kind of sagging down in the middle for this preview. But um, everything's coming together nicely. It's actually making the, the sides of the bed start to touch and interfere here. So I'm gonna have to take a little bit of material off of one side of the, one side of the bed just to make the the cap bit more squarely here but the nice part is on the outside still I haven't taken a flat disc to the outside one bit and it's actually got some panel overlap starting to happen here the panels are starting to bump up against each other um, the same thing at the bottom you can see this gaps really getting small to where it's almost uh, weldable as is here just a little bit of paint removal with the grinder and I think it'll clean up and weld up just fine
think I'm going to call it good enough. It's, uh, it's straight, the gap's close enough so that I can weld it, I think, pretty easily all the way down. Um, and you could mess with it for really just days on end. You could just continue to mess with it and mess with it and mess with it and try to get the gap closer and closer and take it on and off and on and off. And um, At some point, you got to decide, like, can I weld a couple extra gaps or do I want to just keep on messing with it so I can, like, somehow take a, a TIG and go down and, and take that gap. Um, for this truck, I think it's super, super close, so I'm going to take the bed cap off back here, um, tape off the welding marks, take a 36 grit uh, die grinder and run down the edges, take all the paint and rust off there and use a tape line to make a nice straight line all the way down. Same as you did in the front, clean it up on both sides, clean it up across the bed floor and uh, get this thing fitted on there once and for all and get it ready to start tacking up. Well, we're getting down to the end. Almost done. Uh, this panel is all lined up. Got the clamps on it to go back together here. So I'm going to start the tacking procedure and uh, tack this up, tack the other side up, tack the floor, and then get it to a place where I can take these uh, clamps and stuff off of there so it's holding under its own, own power and the welds are actually holding the rear cap back on the bed. And then I think I'll Try to go through and just get the finish welding done on it, which is going to be quite a lengthy process. I think they're just kind of tack, 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 tack as it goes.
Well, long bed turned to short bed in a weekend. Minus some grinding, some cleanup, some work. Uh, it's done. That's that's a lot of work. Um, still has some more work to be done. Got to get the bed bolted down. Got to get this grinding finished up around here. So I'm going to push it outside and then I'll do that grinding out there. Because that grinding is going to make a pretty big mess. And I don't want that stuff making just piles of that grinding dust everywhere in here. Um, so I'll cut these braces out and bolt the bed down. It's got a few little touch up places to come through and tack here and there. There's a pen hole and stuff and all that, but all in all, it's rolling. Um, I'll get the drive shaft taken up to the drive shaft shop first thing tomorrow morning and drop it off with those guys and whew, see if I can get those guys to convert that drive shaft or cut it down or whatever it is I can do. Uh, but there it is. I did it. You can do it. Uh, I'm going through all the measurements, all the work. Now just the uh, cleaning up the mess.